Welcome back, Saints. I'm Jack Henderson. And I'm Jared Hader. And this is SFHS Today. Here at St. Francis High School, the community is mourning the loss of junior Waylon Fontaine. A memorial was held on Friday evening at Lake George. Counselors are on call for any students who need help with coping strategies, and Student Council hosted an open conversation to discuss steps that students can take to support one another. Monday, November 11th was Veterans Day. On Tuesday, Tuesday the 12th, the high school hosted an assembly to honor those who served. Captain Kay Bauer, retired Navy nurse who served in Vietnam, spoke at the event of her experiences working in the military. Reporters Caitlin Riley and Hunter Dustman covered the event. On Tuesday, November 12, St. Francis High School hosted Veterans Day Assembly to honor local veterans and to bring awareness of military service to the entire student body. The Madrigal Singers began the ceremony by singing the national anthem while veterans took their seats. School board member Mike Starr arranged for the keynote speaker. Captain Kay Bauer is a retired Navy nurse and she shared her experiences of serving in Vietnam. How would you like to go to a place where you can um, uh, work with uh, it, taking care of uh, the wounded Americans, but also wounded other, you know, some, some civilians and some other wounded. The assembly ended with the SFHS Wind Ensemble playing the military themes for every branch of service, while veterans stood to be recognized. In more construction updates, fax teacher Beth Waddell gave a sneak preview of the new foods room to reporters Marissa Pantacoke and Grace Vanessa. Let's see how it looks. One of the really nice things about this particular space is first of all, there's people in the hallway. So I'm not like all by myself at the end of a building. So that's really cool. Um, we've got a beautiful view from here. There's lots of windows. Um, we have brand new cupboards and brand new countertops. So that'll all be great. We have uh, room for everything we need in order to do our labs. And that's kind of cool. So we've got that stuff ready. I'm still working on labeling things so we know where stuff is, uh, but that's coming along. As you can see, if you look, that it's pretty much ready to go. It's just about ready to go. We're just finishing up some of the little fine details um, that our maintenance staff here at the high school has been fabulous about working with me and the custodial staff about helping get it together because it's been a lot of work getting this room together because there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, a lot of planning, a lot of pieces, a lot of this and that. Um, so the things that aren't perfect, we're working on improving and making them them good. But it's a really nice space. It's gonna be a great space for working in. I'm excited to teach foods next trimester, I really am. Um, I'm excited to have the kids in here to see actually how it's going to flow and how it's going to work because the design is different. And I love that we have the islands in the middle. So we'll have two kitchens working at each island and they'll be able to help each other and work together. Uh, it's gonna be a really collaborative space, so I like that. One other really nice thing about this room is I have one room, one space built here that's gonna hold the pantry. It's got some storage items for us, some additional items that we use off and on during the year. The big fridge is in there, the washer dryer is in there. I'll have a dishwasher in there. Um, there's some really good stuff. So this is really nice that it's streamlined, but mostly that's going to affect me more than it's going to affect students. On the topic of food and with the holiday approaching, SFHS Today reporter Zach Graff tested his cooking skills in preparation for Thanksgiving. Zach made a full course meal and served his dinner to his family. Let's see what's cooking. First, you're going to want to heat, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Next, you're going to want to take your butternut squash, cut the top off, split it in half. And after you've done that, you're going to take a spoon and scoop all the seeds out from both halves of your squash. 
After you've taken your seeds out, you want to take about half a stick of butter and put it on the top and then inside where the seeds were. As much salt and pepper as you want on top of that and then as much brown sugar as you want all over your squash. Done that, you're going to take a 9 by 13 pan, put just enough water in the bottom of it to coat the bottom and then you're going to place your squash inside of there. Your squash should take about an hour or until you can easily stick a fork into it. we're going to be making some classic mashed potatoes. I peeled about 14 potatoes, which was more than enough. After I peeled all those, I ended up cutting them in about equal sizes, dumping them all into a large pot. And you want to make sure you fill your pot so the water is just over the top and you're just going to let your potatoes boil. For your potatoes and squash are cooking, you're going to start mixing up your stuffing. You need two cups of chicken broth, about half a stick of butter. Just get that all mixed up and all mixed around. Then you're going to put it all into a 9 by 13 pan and make sure it's all even and put it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. For time's sake, I just used half a turkey breast and roasted it at 350 degrees for about an hour. While everything else was cooking, I started to mash my mashed potatoes. I used about a full stick of butter, a little bit of sour cream, and some salt and pepper in there. And I do like mine a little bit chunky, but you can mash it to whatever consistency you would like. Now I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving dinner. In arts news, the fall play Peter and the Starcatcher hosted a showing for the fifth graders of East Bethel Elementary. This past Friday, over 100 students from the elementary school came to the high school, and the cast of the performance showed them around the set and played games with them. In more arts news, this Friday will be the annual Med Madrigal dinner. Reporter Ryan Aschenbach interviewed some students about the upcoming event. What is Madrigals? Our Madrigal Choir is our top-level uh, choir ensemble. It's what's called a chamber ensemble, which means almost everything we do is a cappella without any music. Uh, you have to audition to get into it, um, and it's, uh, what do we have, 34 people in it? The theme for Magicals this year is Lost in Time, um, so it explores time travel. We put on a dinner performance, so you get a nice dinner and also great music and great acting. We are on track to our performance, which is going to be November 22nd through the 24th. Um, we're super confident in our script, we're super confident in our music, so it should hopefully be a really great show. We have our songs memorized and the script is written, so we're just working on memorizing the script right now. Writing the script was actually a really hard process for me, especially because it was just like very last minute and I was expecting a lot more help than I ended up actually getting. Just tell show after we read it for the first time, he said, um, out of my three years of being here, this script makes the most sense. So I think that's as, as big of a compliment as I'm gonna get. Um, I'm really excited, I think, cause we're doing it in a completely different setting because of the construction. So we usually do it in the NPR, but now we're gonna do all of the acting and most of the singing in the PAC. And then the food is gonna be in the commons. So it's gonna be super fun. And then we also have the new light board that is gonna help with effects and the soundboard. So we'll just have, I think it's just gonna overall be a much better show than we've had in the past. Now we'll head on over to Jordan Holler for Sports News. Hey Saints, I'm Jordan Holler and this is Sports. The boys basketball team was having open gym at the YMCA because there is no more open gym at the school, but now their season starts today. What are you focusing on at future practices? Um, continuing to learn how to share the ball and play team offense, um, unselfish basketball, those are the, the kind of things that we want to focus on. How do you think the team will do this year without all of the seniors from last year? I think it will be a challenge for sure because we had a lot of seniors last year who played a lot, but with new guys we should still be good. We have some guys returning with experience. You know, we're excited about our senior class. Um, obviously Wyatt has been around for a long time. We're hoping that, that he has a really strong and successful senior season as well as the other seniors and juniors. And we're going to have some young guys contributing as well. So we're excited about the future. 
What are you most excited for this season? I'm excited to play because last year I had a lot of injuries and I'll be healthy this year. Uh, I'd say playing with some of the younger guys like Cody and Jacob and Matthew Botham. How does the bond of the team differ from last year? This year we're definitely going to be very close and that's going to help us a lot. We've all played together at some point whether like traveling or not so and the rest of us have played together since like third grade so we already have team chemistry. What are your thoughts on moving from 4A to AAA? It's a big difference. Our regular season schedule stays about the same, so we got to get better there. But when it comes to sections, we have a chance to like win the section, actually, if we play well at the right time of the year. Who are some standout players to watch out for this year? Uh, well, like I mentioned, Wyatt has some experience. Jake Magnuson, Kenstead started some games for us last year. We have Tony and AJ, um, also fellow seniors. We have some young guys that have had really productive off seasons. Um, like Cody Pennebaker. Um, I know he's put in a lot of time and has been playing a lot of basketball, so we're looking forward to seeing what those guys can do. The girls' basketball team had trials last week. They had a scrimmage over the weekend against Malak on Saturday. Come support their first game on Friday against Forest Lake at 7. The boys' hockey team started the season last week and has been putting lots of time into practice. They also just had a home scrimmage fest on Saturday over the weekend. The girls' hockey team had two games last week. On Tuesday, they had a tough loss against Henry Sibley 5-3, and they played Minneapolis Cooper on Thursday and lost 5-2. They have games this week on Thursday against Moose Lake, and Saturday they have their home opener against Elk River. It's also uniform personnel night, where veterans and people in uniform are recognized. The girls have special jerseys that they are wearing for the occasion and giving thanks to the people who serve. The wrestling team has been having captain's practice, and their season starts today. The dance team has been working hard in practice and they have their first jazz meet on Tuesday in Monticello at 6.30. The girls gymnastics team started their season last week and had tryouts. This week they will keep the hard work and carry on with practice. Reporter Olivia Olson went out and talked to some of the girls on the team. When does gymnastics season start? Next Monday. How do you think the season's going to go? Um, I think it's going to go very good. What events do you guys do? I do all around too. Um, I think it's going to go pretty good. We have a couple new girls, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, what events do you guys do? Uh, all around, all around. Um, how do you think gymnastic season's going to go? I think it's going to go really good. We have our new team this year, so I think it'll be good. Yeah, we've improved a lot throughout the year, so yeah, it should do pretty good. What type of events are in gymnastics? Vault and floor. What type of events do you do? All around. I do beam, floor, and vault. This week on Wednesday, it was signing day for a few of our St. Francis athletes. Dane Mann signed a Concordia St. Paul for golf. Haley Heckenibel signed, signed a University of Wisconsin Green Bay for softball. And Aubrey Terrace signed to Upper Iowa University for softball. Congratulations to them on their hard work to get where they are now. That's it for sports this week, folks. Check in next week for more progress on our winter sports. Now we'll go to one of our favorite segments of the year, Whip of the Week. Time to roll out with reporters Reed Pastois, Tate Skilquist, and Trevor Patterson, interviewing Caden Ringer on his 1985 Chevy C10. Chevy tow truck and it's a 454 and then we 
swap that into here, and that was pretty much the first thing we did. It's got a full jack exhaust. really hard to find without any cracks this one was actually brown and we used a uh, vinyl paint to paint that black and then we also redid this piece right here so for the interior these two seats are pulled out of a Pontiac G6 and um, when I first got this it had no carpet nothing there's a big big roll stole right there so we had to cut out a piece of sheet metal bend that and weld that back in uh, most of the electrical in this truck is not working right now. Like I don't have my fuel gauge always says it's full and no matter how fast I'm going it always says I'm going zero miles per hour. So we're just waiting to find the uh, right electrical pieces so we can fix all of that. And then I have some different pedals right there. This exact model it is really difficult to find ones that still have working power locks and power windows and we did actually manage to find one that has power locks and power windows. They're not very quick by any means, but they are nice to have. this week's episode. Tune in again next week, Saints. Stay safe, everybody, and have a great week.